Hello there. Welcome to the nth degree with Nieper and Newbie. Who are we again? (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, right. Who am I? Who are you? (laughs) I know. Well, it's so unusual that we actually prepped to talk about a topic because we usually just either in the middle of the conversation, we turn it on or we, you know, decide what we're going to talk about and then just turn it on. But this today, we actually like kind of talked about what we're going to talk about. So yeah, yeah we do. It threw well, me off, Donna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's give an, a nice, healthy disclaimer here at the beginning. You may need to put on your steel toed shoes. Yep. No open toed shoes today. No open toed <laughs> shoes today. And um, you may need to think out of the box. You may need to ask the Lord, show me where I need to be tweaked. Help me to see something I've never seen before. And um, we bless you in that, actually. I bless you in the name of Yeshua, that that if there's anything in your life that needs tweaked, and he might use our vessels to bring um, an encouragement or an aligning word. I mean, I received it from somebody else the other day. I thought, wow, that was amazing, Lord. We need the we need each other. So here we are being the church of Jesus Christ, the living stones. Yep. Yep, exactly. So here's the deal. You probably this isn't news to you, <laughs> but there's crazy stuff aimed at um sexual kind of content, gender kind of content in the world and aimed at our children. Yes. And I haven't felt like it was my place to speak because I'm not a mom. I don't have kids in school. I don't, you know, so I haven't felt like it's my place to speak. However, I was at a women's conference this weekend and it was so powerfully outlaid that, wow, if, if you have an, a bone in your body that wants to stand up for truth and justice and righteousness and say, God is not mocked not on my watch, then you do need to stand up. And that's what I feel like, well, I'm definitely in that camp, right? (laughs) So then what did you say a few minutes ago to me about silence? Oh, yeah. Silence is not safe. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Silence does not make you safe. Silence is not the safe route. Right. But it does feel that way to your soul. It sometimes does. Yeah, it, it really yeah. does. Yeah, I'm just going to stay small, just stay hidden. If I don't say anything, I'll be okay. That's not true. That's right. not true. Right. And the boldness and courage that you need to be a voice and not remain in silence when the Spirit of God is is directing you in that way. And this is goes back to why we need to hear the Lord and actually why we're talking about this today. Because as females, whether whether we have children in the home or or we or we birth the child yet or not, the 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 issue is that females carry the next generation, and that they life unto life, they live unto life, they live to multiply, and so whether you whether you are having that going on in your life or whether they're just around you and you're blessing them, we're talking about the next generation and we're talking about what voices in our United States of America are intentionally, willfully misdirecting them and sexualizing them, politicizing them, um, and 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 the horrors that you saw, <laughs> you might want to describe that in a nutshell. Is yeah. our tra- I'll just tell you, they're traumatic to me as a woman. I have to. I work with the Lord in private times with Him about anxiety about children, grandchildren, the next generation. And and if you're a woman and you're hearing this and you're nodding your head, there's a. I'll just be transparent. Sometimes <laughs> there's that low level anxiety that's a drain on my joy a drain on my faith and I'm I'm aware of it and I have to deal with it because I'll what what I what I have found is that if I just try to bat it down and ignore it it only gets louder and it and it it's a worse drain so to deal how do you deal with that 
well, I have my ways. I go to God and we talk, you know, about, about it. Um, anyway, all that to say, our conversation is about not being quiet about the things that matter. Right. And our children matter. And, and there's a, a movement, um, a man in Peru, I think his name is Christian Rosas or Rosas. I could be saying this last name wrong, but anyway, he was able be, with a with a groundswell of a movement that was don't mess with our kids, although in in Spanish, so um, con mis hijos no metras. Um, he he was able to change the system, government system in Peru, and they got the pornography out of the school system, and so this. That had such an impact on several people, including Lou Engel, that they started a movement here to do the same thing. And you may have heard that they've called for a million moms or a million women million march women. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. On, on the, on the ca- in D.C. At the, on the Capitol Mall on October 16th. But the prep for that is April 13th in your state capitol. Every state is uh, the the prairie, praying moms, praying women, people and their families, doesn't matter if you're a man, doesn't matter, come to the Capitol and pray against this sexualizing and misdirecting of gender issues. Mm-hmm. And what they showed in that, in the conference, they it was they asked the children to leave the room. I'm like, oh, I should have left the room. Um, because of what they showed you and how because what they showed me that was in the school our kindergartners can just go check out these books in the library like I I did not know that the pornography like showed kids how to do sex positions and when an adult touches you this is what it's going to look like and feel like I'm like oh my gosh it was horrible Mm -hmm. absolutely horrible and the and what's her name camilla harris whatever her name is she was there um you know saying against the parents who were wanted to take that out of the school that and the nea the national education association they were screaming these women were screaming at the top of their lungs in this huge auditorium about don't let them take away our freedom. You know, this is our democracy and all of this stuff. And they were saying this about the parents who wanted to take this pornography out of the school. And it, it's just, it's yeah. so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. But we need to stand up and stand for justice. God will not be mocked. They will pay for what they're doing. But mm-hmm. it's going to be on us to do what we can do to so pray to fast to stand right so let's define us because some of us yeah. <laughs> have been in this fight a long time there sure. are women i know in the generation before me two generations before me that have been praying for a long time and standing and working in movements and working cross gen- cross cultural in churches you know cross church cultures and and all that. And then there's some that are deceived by thinking that they can sit in their own little brick and mortar church on the corner and never cross culture in this hour, in this present right. day. And and that that's that that's going to get the job done, that that's right. going to preserve what this 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 what what god is doing in this nation and he needs us he needs our voice he needs our feet he needs our hands um so us being the living stones of jesus christ the church we're the corporate church and yes we may have a brick and mortar church down the street that we meet on in on sundays right that that's our 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 go to place for fellowship but the work of the church is often when we gather and we cry out corporately to the, to the Lord. It's so powerful. It's so powerful that Satan p- 
prevents you from doing that. He'll prevent you from thinking you need to do that. And it's so powerful because in the spirit, it opens a portal. What what comes through the, the, the portal that we open when we gather and cry out focus to God in large numbers is impactful to the earth, the natural realm, because we chose to be that releaser of the kingdom through him dwelling in us and us focusing back to him and saying, Lord, come do this. Right. So it's we're past the time if there ever was a time where you can just say, oh, wow, that's really too bad for them. I that's so bad that their kids are going through that and just, oh, I pray, Lord, just protect the kids. We're past that. We're so past just saying it's not oh, it's not my kids. So therefore, oh, too bad for you. Right. It's because we have to look at how the enemy is mobilizing and engaging. When we see that the the um one percent of the population or three percent of the population or something can totally change the entire education system, the entire um system of what bathrooms have to be in a restaurant. I mean, it's it's crazy to see that, but what did they do? They got together and they mobilized. They yeah. use their voices, they use their feet. And we need to do exactly that. As the body of Christ, we are God's hands and feet. And it's not, it's not someone else's problem. Mm -hmm. And it does cost you. It costs so us. You have it, to get it, out it of your cost you. Zone. But what it costs you we, you, we can remember that God is a giving God and that out of the manifold resources of his heaven all we have to do is ask to be replenished right and and but but this is i think um oh i had a thought now it lost me <laughs> it escaped me um i have been and stood on the mall of the united states in washington dc for many things and i want you guys to know that the mall in washington dc is used by many groups and not all of them obviously are Christian, but they're al allowing, you know, that that's a place of freedom of speech right now. And I've been there where there's been a lot of people. When I heard that Lou Engle was doing this in October, I heard this probably last October, maybe before, but I was like, I need to get there. I want to go there. Right now, I don't have the plans in place, but I really do in my heart want to go there. I believe it's important to do that this October. Right. I agree. Uh, and what I what I want to communicate is to me, it's not important to be a part of a million moms on the mall. You know, that's a nice, catchy soundbite. It's not important to me that the media does or doesn't pick it up. What's important to me about that is that I'm corporately gathering with people of like faith, we may only have grains of sand of likeness in faith, but at least we have that. And we're there to not to be seen by the White House, but to be seen by God. And the, I, I find this very um, drawing because there will be prayer there. There'll be worship there. The name of Jesus will be glorified there. And it needs to be. And that's what we're doing on April 13th at the state capitals, every state capital. And that um, that website that you can go to register is uh, Her Voice Movement. However, movement is MVMT, hervoicemovement.com. Her and Voice we'll Movement. Mm -hmm. Right? So I hear you saying, okay, I write it down. Yeah. Let me. Her voice. I'm going to go to it on my computer here. M-B-M-T is the way they spelled the movement.com. Correct. No okay. vowels in there. Yeah. Her, Her voice. voice M-V-M-T. M-V-M-T dot com. Yeah. And so you can um, register, just not that you have to register, but it just lets people, lets the organizers know what they can count on and what they yeah. can expect. 
and then just rock up to the Capitol and, you know, the leaders are going to be praying and there's probably going to be worship music there. Maybe, maybe not at every state Capitol. I don't know. You know, I'm not part of the leadership, but your voice matters and your presence matters. And then, and, um, Another thing that they were talking about is every time that you see a pride, uh, LGBT, whatever, XYZ um, thing, they're in their colors. They're waving their flags. They've got their rainbows on, right? And anytime you see rainbows, you want to just take it back because God gave that symbol to us, right? So she was saying that if you if you show up, that's awesome. We're, we love that. But if you show up in our colors, which is which is actually um, a fuchsia, not exactly this. This is more magenta. But there's a fuchsia, fuchsia, and a and a blue, and it says hashtag Don't mess with our kids on the front, and um, pray uh, fast and stand on the back. When everyone's wearing those colors, it just makes that much more of an impact. Because color says something, unity says something, and you know it's a it's a united front and a united prayer. So right. I think those shirts are available on that website as well if you if you want to do that. I yeah. I have a funny story about mine, but God God is God is so good, right? This is my funny story. I wanted the the power blue one, and the top one that I picked up that had it in English was a 2x I'm like well I just need a large so I was just thumbing through the rest of them and I pulled out a large paid for it walked away throw it in my suitcase came home call it out and it's in Spanish so apparently <laughs> I am going to be wearing this because somebody needs to see on the back ora ayuda um uh whatever um stand firm is I forgot what it is but on the front it is <laughs> Um, con mis hijos no me so. Oh, 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 wow, that's really awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm all about that because color is frequency, and frequency often is saying something. So, unified that that's interesting. Um, my story about about this and and the despicable, horrendous tragedy that's taking place in our schools um, is, of course, my granddaughters. Because my my first granddaughter, she wasn't even, gosh, she was maybe 18 months. And I took her to the public library. And I was delighted at the little, you know, stations that they had at the public library for little bitties and all that. And then I we sat down over where the board books are. And every, I kid you not, I am not exaggerating. <laughs> every third board book for little bitties that I pulled out was either transgender oriented or sexual sexualization of children. I was shocked. I was shake. I was shook. I was really shaken by that. And to the point where I was like, I wanted to stand up and go, have we lost our mind? Because this is in your public library because your public library is liberal, real liberal. And I'm not even saying liberal as a category. I'm saying it's anti-God. It's anti-human. <laughs> and, right. and it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah, as we progress to the progression of where the earth is going, but we're not there yet. And we have the grace of God and his, and the faith to, to make it, to move a mountain or do we? And I got to thinking about that. How do I move this mountain? How do I move this mountain? Because it matters to me. Oh, I want to, the only way you can move a mountain sometimes is be with the people who are also mountain movers. Exactly. It's great. Well said. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Two other things that they, they showed, um, they, they just did a, a live stream of, of one of these transvestite whatever reading things to these little kids and so all the little kids are sitting cross-legged on the floor in a little half circle in the library and this transvestite is acting out sex moves and all the parents are just you know, know happy time. i'm like they uh, become foolish are it's, oh my gosh i just wanted to slap them upside the head excuse me but wow yeah so that one thing and then the other thing they they literally showed 
homework that the kids had to do or the not maybe not take it home but do it in school and it was the description of like a, a story of um little Susie was born with female parts but she thinks she's a boy so what does that make her and they had to fill in what that makes her and you know and all of the different types and they and and so they showed this with the children's handwriting that filled them out and then they got one wrong and the red mark that the the teacher had written like someone had just taken a photograph if you're of an adult that ought to make you puke that ought yeah. to make you so disgusted you can you almost want to turn this off what we're talking about it's so difficult for some of us to talk about that but i want to throw this out there because you said something before we got on the video i think sometimes when we are most pierced by a thing Oh gosh, I, hear. I feel like that is the thing that you have such a grace from Father within you. It's like a calling to pray that back to Him. The other day, I told Jesus, I mean, I was just really having a moment with Him. It was beautiful. But I said, Jesus, when I hear about these things, it pierces me. And do you know what He said? He said to me, I know I was pierced for you. Mm. And I was just undone at that moment, you know, because the his beautiful presence, but his beautiful truth. And I and I said, okay, I hear you saying to me, you were pierced for me for that. Am I just identifying with it? And he said, Yes, you're identifying with my suffering. You're identifying with what pierced me. And, and and it's not completely finished yet, right? Because the work of the church until he comes. And so he says, so let it motivate you. Let it find, find that place in you where it becomes the wave of a, of a crest of a movement of something that you are praying back to me or doing on my behalf. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And another another thing that's available is to start a prayer hub and they literally have a 30, um, 30 prayers and declarations. So you could do it every day for 30 days or you could do it once a week or doesn't matter. But they have a sample formula of what the prayers could look like should you choose to do this. So it, they, they're trying to make it as easy as possible to come together, to unite, like Donna says, to open the, the portal that will create the movement and release the angels into the situation. It literally says that the angels will fight for us and we yes. have to we have to call because we're they're co-laboring with us. We are the sons who are the hands and feet of God on the earth. So we have to by the word of our testimony and by our voice print that goes out, we have to open that those portals up so the angels can come down and fight if yeah. So on that on that same website, her yes. voice movement. That's so good. You know, mm -hmm. taking it to the end degree, when you gather at, at a place like the Capitol or the Mall of Washington, DC, and you are unified in what you are praying, like that prayer template that they're putting out. Mm -hmm. It's a un it's 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 all voices saying the same thing. Do you right. see the multiplication? Let me tell you. Satan and his cohort know this works because they have people Absolutely. who are doing template rituals all the time. Incantations. Yep. So they, he, he Absolutely. Me, Kristen, we are called to pray from template prayers because when we crawl, call out together, we are linking our voice. It's a quantum experience. It really is. Yeah. It is quantumly link, linking us in time and space, outside time and space. <laughs> That's hard to wrap your mind around. But and it and and these are filling the bowls of heaven. We are interdimensional beings. So saying that, let me let me just say one other thing. I have also known that how do I how, it's almost like the spirit of God cho showed me this, Donna, you you can, yes, this can pierce your heart and your soul. Okay. So your mind, will, and emotions, it can pierce you because it's devastatingly against my word and your soul knows that but do not let it 
simmer there only. Instruct your soul to submit itself to your spirit and then release your spirit to pray what needs to be prayed with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's praying in tongues. That's just listening to the Lord sometimes to know what to pray about that. And I feel like what I'm trying to say is if we just let the horrendous tragedy of this sit in our soul, what happens is it paralyzes us because it's trauma. But if we who have awakened spirits, many of us filled with the spirit of God, if we allow our spirit to take that same content and to interdimensionally exchange it with the living God, now we've done something greater than with it. Well, oh, that's so good. Two verses come to mind that kind of that back up what we're talking about in scripture. One says that the voices from generations past will be uh, mingled together. And so when you talk about other generations praying for like when the prayer was removed from the schools in the 60s, you, we know that there were people praying against that, right? So we can gather those prayers and mingle them with ours and present them up to the Father. And it's that commingled incense of prayers. You know, the prayers are like incense that will that will be a force. And that's how when we're all doing it together across the country in every capital on the 13th, that all comes mingled up and it and it prepares and it opens gateways and it opens portals and brings more awareness and everything so that when the October 16th in the Capitol and probably beyond because I, you know, usually things like this aren't a once and done, but when that happens, then all of heaven is prepared and they're already fighting and they're already geared up and they've got all of the, every, uh, you know, they're in order, they're ready to yeah. go. Yeah. And the other, the other um, verse that came up was, uh, I, I, I'm just really bad at the address, but it says that we have the right to pull the angel armies through to fight our battles for us. And mm-hmm. and I wish I could remember that. I, I look looking, I usually have my Bible right here by me, but I, it's in the other room right now. So I think it's in Ephesians, but anyway. Um, but it's proof of the interdimensional beings that we are and that we are right. cause, causators, ca- causation of things in unseen places. Right. And and if you're on the fence about that, come on over to the nth degree, get off the fence. Let us, let us help you understand that's who God, you're an image bearer of Christ and right. born again one, you are awakened to his spirit. So you're definitely an inter- interdimensional being. So Absolutely. what you say and do, where you find yourself on the planet doing and thinking, even thinking about, it's all quantum related. You, if you're an interdimensional being, you're a quantum being. Absolutely. And it makes a difference. It is making a difference. But here's the other thing I wanted to say. Prayer is dependence upon God. It When we gather at these capitals and state capitals on April 13th, we're saying to God, we recognize the problem, but we know we also cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone. We are dependent upon you, our father in heaven, to accomplish for us what we cannot do. And that is the synergy of the Godhead and his and the church. Jesus is the head. And so that's the synergy. Well, the holy angels of God are just, I think, continually released out of that to accomplish their commissions from Father. And that a lot of times it's because we, the earth dwellers, those who have breath in, in their body, we lean on the unseen God and ask in other we ask but we're also putting a demand on the covenant we're putting a demand on the relationship that we have through Jesus with father that his will be done we're saying (laughs) what Jesus told us to pray come Lord do your will here in this thing about this issue and this matter in this geography of your earth. Yeah, and 
and remember that the the remnant we did talk about this before we started recording the remnant are those who are overcoming mm-hmm. and you can't overcome unless you fight yeah right? so if i i would just admit that if you're not fighting you're not part of the remnant well also you have to take a stand exactly um yeah. Having done all things, therefore stand, Ephesians chapter six. But you have to do all things. You have to do all things. So <laughs> exactly. there's there's many things to do. Um, one thing not to do is to despair. So if yeah. your hope, that's one of my words this year, if your hope is on the low side, you need simply to ask your father to refin- replenish your hope. Because that comes from the well that's within you. That comes from the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. That comes intangibly, not naturally, but intangibly. Hope is an intangible thing. But it is important because lest you have hope, you lose vision. And those who lose hope and lose vision, guess what they lose next? Life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So ask your father in heaven for that vision and that hope. Because hope is... um, it it is a uh, launch pad to praying with faith, and that's the other thing I want to say. We are combining faith with this. Check where your faith level is about this. Am I in belief that Father will move when He hears His children? And if you need faith, it is a replenishable quantity thing as well, uh, intangible, but it's it's a thing that and ask Father for faith. Yeah. Two more things came to mind. Um, I can't hear you, Berlin. What just oh, happened? What happened? Oh, it came back. Your sound. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two more things came to mind. One is that um, Christ is coming back for a bride who has prepared herself and going into battle and doing what being obedient to the call of creating justice where there's injustice is part of preparing yourself. So that's one thing and then the other thing i'm i think of esther and esther's arises the name of the conference that we went to so there's a lot about esther but here's one thing esther was positioned as a queen but still she felt like her silence was safe and mordecai had to remind her um no if they kill all the jews you are a jew you You will be killed Mm -hmm. too yeah right so she had to move past that chicken line of just being in position to actually move into the purpose of why God put her in that position and say, if I die, I die. And she went to the king. But what happened on the other side of that obedience and her stepping out and saying, OK, well, you know, I, I, I'm going for it. Uh, what happened was the king said up to half of my kingdom. Uh-huh. So it was way more than she expected. You know, she could, she expected, well, it's 50, 50 then, so that I could die here, you know, and maybe on the other, the other 50 was, okay, he'll hear me. He'll listen to me. Right. right? He did. She didn't expect up to half of my kingdom. Will I give you? So I think that the Lord is going to be over and above what we could ask or dream of after we've made that step across that chicken line. Yeah. And see, that <laughs> translates to faith. You just expressed your faith. Mm-hmm. I believe that too. I believe God hears. And I believe mm-hmm. <sighs> there's a, so much doom and gloom conversation out there right now that I believe that the enemy is ever playing his hand. I believe the, that we are going to get a reprieve, a big reprieve. I don't know how long, but for a, a long time. That, And we're going to be seen to move. And, and and God's going to do, I don't think we're, I, I hate to talk about end times and timing, you know, because. Because no one knows. Well, I think you can know, Be we're supposed to know, I, I believe we're supposed to know, but I believe it takes a lot of, of sitting with father to know. So my horse is still out in that pasture and uh, I got, I'm not sure where he is right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stand on what God said. He says, no one knows, not even the sun. Well, knows. I'm not saying to know no. the exact time because Jesus said yeah. that, obviously. Yeah. But I believe that Issachar prophets were told that you can know of the times and seasons. You can know the season that you're in. So right. anyway, we're, didn't mean we are to. in the end time season. Correct. We are in an end time season. But 
the victories of God are there. It, I mean, isn't that just God? Before he's going to judge Satan and Lucifer, he's, he's going to never stop gaining victories. Somewhere he's always gaining victory. Exactly. He he comes back for the victorious overcomers. Yes. yes. So we're gonna be victorious. And all we're doing right now is learning yeah. and and using our muscles to stay in faith, to stay in hope, right. and to push. Not just to stand, but to push back against darkness. In other words, you can say you're pushing back against darkness, but you can also say you're seeking righteousness. Mm-hmm. And as a remnant. Father's mercy and grace is so big that he will hear the remnant and release goodness. He also said the gates of hell will not stand against us. That's right. So, you know, as we are storming the gates and we're pushing on them, you know, you've seen those the gates of the castle and you're, you're you know, right. we're breaking in. We're breaking in because they're not going to stand. Right. We're going to break in and bring in truth. We're going to bring in that justice and his righteousness. I often think yeah. about the people who are on the other side of this coin. And I'm glad to be a student of the word because I know the word says that they will be darkened in their understanding. They will become fools because they have sought to be fools. Not that God wants them to be a fool, but he will call them foolish. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that. Um, when I think about it, it, it helps me not be so angry at them and have a little bit of God's compassion toward them. When I realize they're operating out of a complete position of foolishness and a complete, they come from a place of complete and utter darkness and how horrible for them that that that's the case. Yeah. The deception is just, it is beyond understanding for those of us who can see the truth you know and we're in the light so i guess the the call to action then is to just to get involved and pray fast stand come together go to hervoicemovement.com be at the capitol on april 13th and again at the capitol in dc on the mall on october 16th and um yeah we'll be there and we're standing with you and Mm -hmm. and know that those of us who are praying for the people to come across the the line we're praying for you Mm -hmm. if you're hearing the sound of our voice you are being prayed for Mm -hmm. for the boldness and the courage and the financial means if necessary you know the whatever it takes to get you the in the physical to get where you need to go to in the in the in your emotions to get yourself sorted to rise up to the occasion you're being prayed for you mm-hmm. are being prayed for a, by a lot by a <laughs> lot of people right remember yeah. that the the million moms that's the Gideon's 300 right if you think about the mm-hmm. the however many hundreds of millions of people there are in the u.s the the mil the one million that's the that's the little gideon 300 coming together mm-hmm. right and if you want to know more about that and lou ingle l-o-u is his name lou ingle i don't know how he spells his e- last name e-n-g oh l-e-n-g-l-e or yeah. e-l anyway uh- um You can look at, you can Google him. He has quite a story about how he came to this. He doesn't just do these things lightly. This is a man who is known for fasting and prayer, but um, he's also known for a movement. Um, And if any of you were, have been part of the other movements of God, um, not in the million, but in the thousands, bravo to you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining your voice. And, and, undergoing the expense that it took to 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 do that i know i've done that a couple times in my life and it's impactful and it changes things 
Yeah, that's good. I was just looking on the website to see if there's a link to Lou. I didn't see one. That doesn't mean there isn't. But um, I know that he and Jenny Donnelly are working together with a lot of other people as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's several groups. Yeah. And it takes it's going to take that, right? It's going to take. Right, exactly. Joining several hands. people got that same word from the Lord. And you know how God orchestrates things. They found each other. Another another woman who was with Lou Engel in the in the moment, and also um, who's the other one? Not Lou Engel, but um, oh, I can't think of his name at the moment. Uh, same same stream. Uh, also with Todd White, they were in a room together, and he got oh um. Oh my gosh, I just, uh, okay, never mind. Okay. He, she was given a word that she was going to lead a million moms. And so it was like, they, this was a separate, you know, thing. So a lot of people are getting that same word and yeah, coming together. Yeah. And let the Lord lead you in that. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to be touched by the Lord when I first heard of Luz gathering people on the mall because I've done that before, right? I've, I've done it with other groups that are, were praying groups um, in various, all, you know, all these years. But when I heard that, I could feel the resonant frequency within my being go, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. That's a leading of God. And um, so I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I really want to be there. <laughs> Waylon, Andrew, is it Andrew Waylon? I don't know. Or somebody, somebody Waylon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He apparently he's on yeah, the he's largest. A mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With them. He's the one that gave that word about the million moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So you guys, I hope this has been informative and it's a wake up call. We're, we're calling you like literally take action. Donna yeah. and I usually just pour into you, give it, give you insight, give you revelation, talk about what we're talking, thinking about. But this time we're saying, oh no, we're calling you to do something. Yeah. So share this out with somebody else who needs encouragement to stand and um, contact us. Uh, you can get in touch with me through dwellhouse.net. Contact us. Let us know if you're, if, if this moved you, if this moved your needle, you know, moved yeah. you off go to, yep. to do a thing. Be yep. curious you about can. that. Comment wherever you're seeing it, or you can get a hold of me on spiritcenteredbusiness.com. Yeah, I, I would like to to hear um, the story and get the message out there, you know, share it. You are, you are not alone, ladies and gentlemen. You, you are, are part alone. of a huge, huge movement of God. Exactly. So take it to the nth degree. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, I know we said we stopped, but here's an add-on. Here's a PS. Go for it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was just telling Berlin about this issue with the pornography in public schools that I'm loosely holding the expectation. I, I, I'm holding my hope and expectation for change, but I'm loosely holding what it will look like because right. I don't expectancy. know. Expectancy. Yes. And the expectancy of is it going to actually shift current? Uh, public schools or is God going to raise up something else that's brand new that because if we don't pray it won't be raised up but if we will pray and come together in unity and pray he'll raise up something that's brand new and yeah. what that newness could look like I I don't know um, but it excites me and it makes me go wow God it to, for you to use us in your church to in the church of Jesus as living stones to ra raise up something brand new that would take the enemy by surprise. Wow. So yeah. be careful of your expectations because if you're thinking it's got to look ABC, God may be saying, no, I'm looking EAD or CEF or GHA or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Victory might look different. And also given the history the media is not going to report it. Right. Don't expect so, that. And if I they think do there's report it, be... they're not going to report it accurately. They're going exactly. to tell us who knows what that yeah. we know we're not. But right. that is the boldness. That's the Esther stand, yep. quite honestly. Yep. Okay, now I think we're really done. Okay, we're really done. <laughs> Thank you. All we're right, we took it, we took it beyond the nth degree. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.